How's everyone doing? Today I have a 4K Ultra HD mail day right here, 11 pickups. And if you've seen any of them, definitely let me know what you think of them. And I have seen all of these movies, but I haven't checked them all out in 4K, so this is mostly going to be a mail day instead of just reviewing them on the 4K. I have checked out a few of them. And uh, first up is Pets. And I'm going to do a unboxing slash review video of this. And I'll be doing a giveaway for the standard Blu-ray edition. It does have a cut through the barcode, but hopefully you guys don't mind. <laughs> so look forward to that coming up soon, probably next week. Um, and then this is the 4K Ultra HD version of The Secret Life of Pets, which honestly going in, I didn't think I was really going to enjoy it. I thought it was going to be more geared towards kids, and I was blown away by it. I thought it was hilarious. It did have some adult comedy in it, not quite to the sausage party level, but I thought there were some really entertaining moments in here. And for me, Kevin Hart as uh, the bunny rabbit right there stole the show. Stole the show. Great voice acting. And I thought this was just a great uh, fam family friendly movie, but everybody can enjoy it. I, I love the heck out of it. For me, it's one of the better animated movies I've seen in a while. It's pure entertainment and just uh, a very likable movie. It's nothing new conceptually, it's kind of an adventure movie. Um, but I will say I did compare the 4K Ultra HD and the Blu-ray and there really wasn't too much of a difference uh, quality wise, which I was kind of surprised about. Um, but I think if you're a fan of 4K Ultra HD, you're probably going to pick this up anyways. Uh, it's the, the new craze essentially. Most of the time you can tell the difference uh, from the ones that I've compared like uh, the Shallows. I definitely saw a, a big difference in that one. The clarity was amazing. Uh, but I will say I love the animation style. Very bright and vivid. And uh, just a very fun, entertaining movie that I would definitely recommend. I'm loving uh, the slip covers right here. A lot of them have the kind of curved edges right there where it's not like the standard right there where it's complete. Um, but I, I dig it. At first I wasn't sure about it, but it's something unique. But I would definitely recommend this as a movie. Very entertaining. Next up is War Dogs. Uh, this was uh, from Universal, by the way, The Secret Life of Pets. And uh, War Dogs right here is from Warner Brothers. This surprised me too because I'm not a big Jonah Hill fan at all. I can't believe he got nominated for an Oscar for Moneyball. Same year that Melissa McCarthy got nominated for Bridesmaids, her Best Supporting Actress, which is just Balgardash, I can't believe that. I'm still shocked and upset about that. I'm not a fan of Melissa McCarthy. She certainly didn't deserve an Oscar nomination. I don't think Jonah Hill did either. Um, that year was just rough. But this, he played this role. He plays the same kind of obnoxious kind of role so many times. And he does the same thing here, but it really works. This and Superbad were my best, or my favorite performances from Jonah Hill. And I really enjoy Miles Teller. Very talented, uh, especially in uh, Whiplash. But this is basically loosely based on a true story about a bunch of guys in their early tw or two guys who are friends in their early 20s who start um, selling guns to different militaries uh, they find a way there's uh, that they can bid on military contracts and they kind of get in over their heads and then there's conflict between the two of them and I love that cover right there kind of the Scarface thing which is their favorite movie and I really love how the ending played out and Bradley Cooper too was awesome and I, again the ending with him as well but a great supporting cast uh, really well done uh, some good tension too and just very uh, surprising performances too uh, especially from Jonah Hill again one of my favorites from him now and this is these two movies are two of my favorite movies of the year so far um, I would say they're they don't make my top five uh, but I would say they make top 10 to 12 range right now so I would definitely recommend the both of them uh, next up is Jason Bourne if you're a fan of the Bourne uh, franchise I think you'll enjoy it but there's nothing new conceptually here Tons of action. If you're a fan of action, I think you'll appreciate it. I will say, the car chase towards the end was one of the most phenomenal, heart-palpitating car chases that I've ever seen. That was amazing to me. Uh, great supporting cast in here. I'm a big fan of uh, Alicia Vikander. And uh, got Julia Stiles. Got uh, a whole bunch of uh, recognizable people in here. And then, uh, so good to have uh, Matt Damon back in the Bourne franchise. Uh, Tommy Lee Jones. Uh, Vincent uh, Cassell, who I always remember for La Haine, is one of my favorites uh, modern black and white movies. And uh, this was definitely uh, something that I think fans of the franchise will appreciate, but again, I just wanted something more from it. It's It was kind of just basic. It just felt like, you know, an action run over and over, kind of monotonous. Some of it was a little too shaky cam-ish. 
a little dizzying. Um, but overall, it was decent. Not my favorite of the franchise at all, but it was nice to see him back. I hope they make more of them, but do something new. Uh, again, it's the whole thing, him being, you know, spied on, him trying to find more about his history and him trying to somewhat get revenge and kind of going back and forth with what he wants to do and people trying to bring him back into the agency and him being conflicted about it. And again, Alicia Vikander was fantastic. Even when they try to downplay her beauty, she still looks good to me. Uh, but yeah, again, if you're a fan of the franchise, you'll enjoy it, but I just wanted something more from it. Again, some great action sequences, especially that car chase. Uh, this was from Universal as well. Uh, the next four right here are from Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers are killing with the 4K uh, Ultra HD releases. I haven't checked out these ones. I have checked this. I will say this looked amazing on uh, 4K. Uh, the next few, next bunch I haven't checked out yet um, on 4K. But I am legend. So excited to check this out. In fact, the next four, or the next, this bunch right here from Warner Brothers, I am so excited to check out in 4K. I Am Legend, I love the heck out of this adaptation from Richard Matheson's novel, I Am Legend, and by far the best adaptation in my opinion. I Am Omega, uh, or sorry, Omega Man rather, with uh, Charlton Heston, it's just too dated, and at, it just seems cheesy to me. And the original Last Man on Earth with uh, Vincent Price, I just thought that was boring. Like he's just kind of walking past them, it's just, ugh. This to me, and some people, it blows my mind uh, that people don't consider this horror movies. I heard people say it. I'm like, you must be nuts. This is clearly horror. Uh, you have these infected people who are violent trying to kill him. It, it's the epitome of horror, and I love it. I love the that kind of contrast between those scenes and then the emotional despair where he's all alone and he's just looking for, you know, some kind of human connection, talking to, like, the mannequins and stuff, and just that loneliness there. And I will say my only gripe about this movie is the ending. There is an alternate ending, and I kind of wish they would have, like, mixed both of them together a little bit. Uh, but this does have uh, some good special features in here, and I love this movie. Again, like I said, my favorite of the adaptation, and Richard Matheson from New Jersey as well. I'm a big Will Smith fan. Uh, love just the desolate setting right there, too. I love kind of post-apocalyptic style movies. Again, this is like the infected post-apocalyptic kind of thing. And uh, really enjoy this movie. Can't wait to check it out in 4K. Uh, again, uh, Goodfellas right here. This, to me, is probably the best mafia gangster mob movie out there i prefer it even over the godfather one and two um love this one so many memorable scenes and lines especially with joe pesci go get your shine box <laughs> i amuse you i'm funny am i a clown like that whole so many parts in here are just so memorable and uh this is just fantastic the based somewhat on the true story of henry hill and uh you know him and his associates trying to work their way up in the mob, and just a fantastic cast in here. Ray Liotta, Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci. Uh, one thing I do want to say is, I, you know, it's kind of debatable if you consider a, a Bronx Tale, you know, a mob gangster movie. I, I think it is, and I would love to see that get a 4K release. The only release it has is a release, I think, over, or the only one that I've checked out personally is the one from the UK, which is region free, but the Blu-ray isn't that great quality wise. I think that definitely deserves a Blu-ray release here in the States and a better treatment too. And I'd love to get a 4K release for it. That's probably my favorite, if you consider, it's one of my all time favorite movies. Uh, if you consider it a mob movie, I would put that up there. But this is like the most traditional of that kind of thing. And it's my favorite by far. And I can't wait to check this out in 4K. Again, really nice slip covers on all of these as well um again a lot of these ones have the uh, like this one right here the universal ones and the lionsgate ones they have like that glossy sheen to it which i really like and next up is the town which ben affleck killing it uh, i know a lot of people were just ripping on him when he first got cast for batman versus uh, and batman versus superman i made a whole video about it how you guys need to calm the heck down you know, of course, he wasn't that great of an actor when he started out, but he's grown, and he's a great actor now and a great director. The supporting cast in here is phenomenal. Rebecca Hall, John Hamm, Jeremy Renner, Blake Lively. Blake Lively is so stunning. Uh, my only criticism about this movie is uh, there's a little bit too much of the romance elements, especially towards the end of the movie. Um, that that was my... I, I'm nitpicking there, but this is just a phenomenal movie. The best two modern heist movies are Heat and The Town in my opinion. But yeah, The Heat, I'd love to see that get a 4K release. Really looking forward to checking this out. Some good special features on here as well. So, excited. Again, I want to say uh, Secret Life of Pets has a whole bunch of special features too. So, there you go. Go ahead and go over the special features. Just go ahead and show them to you real quick. 
There's for the one for War Dogs. And here's the ones for uh, Jason Bourne. I don't know if I showed it for I Am Legend or not, but there you go. And uh, Goodfellas, right there. Commentaries. And I do appreciate special features. I know a lot of people don't always, but I kind of delve into them, especially for their movies that pique my interest or I'm a big fan of. Uh, next up is Argo. Argo, fuck yourself. <laughs> I think Ben Affleck got screwed here. He definitely deserved a Best Director nomination. This won Best Picture. Uh, I think it was nominated for three Oscars, but again, a fantastic supporting cast and a uh, great job here again from Ben Affleck directing and acting wise. You got Brian Cranston, Alan Ark, and John Goodman. Uh, again, trying to the whole story of them trying to get uh, the hostages out and what they do uh, with the, the movie and that whole kind of premise is just really intriguing to me and it had a uh, great drama and suspense and uh, of course, an ending that was, uh, you know, kind of uh, satisfying, essentially. But uh, I like when they mix history in there for a lot of these ones as well. I think they're doing a lot of great adaptations of that. And uh, based on loosely, if so, uh, based on true stories, like even War Dogs, loosely based. But uh, Argo was an amazing film. Really enjoyed the heck out of that. Next up are the four Hunger Games movies. Now, there was an issue initially uh, from Lionsgate for uh, Catching Fire. A lot of the ones, uh, the discs weren't working. Um, so they re... I guess they sent out new ones and they uh, redid the discs and stuff, so um, hopefully no issue there. I've been assured that there isn't an issue, so uh, there we go. The first Hunger Games is by far my favorites, and I like how each one of them is has the numerals right there so you don't get them mixed up, uh, so you know how they go sequentially in order. And there's Katniss right there. I'm a big fan of uh, Jennifer Lawrence. I think she's a fantastic actress. And I remember first seeing Jennifer Lawrence in Winter's Bone, and she did a phenomenal job there in Silver Linings Playbook and everything that she's done with David O. Russell, Bradley Cooper, all those collaborations. I hope they do more there. I think she's kind of like a modern Meryl Streep in a way as far as getting her Oscar recognition as well. And again, I can't wait to see what she does in the future, no matter what. She was great in everything I've seen her in. I, I enjoyed Joy as well, which I didn't think I was going to really uh, enjoy as much as I did. And a big part of that was uh, Jennifer Lawrence. She's stunning. She's talented. Uh, she can do a wide variety of acting roles, drama, action. You know, we've seen it here with the Hunger Games films. And i really like to see Battle Royale get a 4K Ultra HD release here in the States as well. Or, you know, region free so everybody can view it. I know uh, Dawn of the Dead just got a 4K Ultra HD release. I think it was an Italian release for it. i got to check that out. But let me know what other movies you'd like to see get a 4K Ultra HD release. But just a really popular franchise and great to see these on 4K as well. Looking forward to checking them out. And there's the special features right there. And again, these ones have the curved edges where they're kind of cut out on the sides. Which at first I wasn't sure about, but now I kind of dig it. Something new and, uh, new and unique. And I like the kind of a glossy finish to the slip covers. And then next up is Catching Fire. And there we go right there with the cast in the back and the special features. Uh, lots of action. Uh, the cast is, the supporting cast is really awesome in here too. Then uh, there's uh, Mockingjay Part 1, which is the third. And there's the special features right there. I'm really excited to check a lot of these uh, action movies out uh, for the HDR and uh, see how much of an improvement they look on 4K. And then uh, Mockingjay Part 2. Uh, one of the things I liked about Mockingjay Part 2, there's a certain scene towards the end of the movie I think they're like going through like these tunnels it almost reminds me of like aliens uh, what they kind of uh, interact with and uh, encounter and just that kind of chase sequence and stuff uh, but yeah I think this was a decently satisfying end to the franchise so there you go there's the uh, Hunger Games films right there and there are all 11 4k ultra HD pickups and again, if you've seen any of them, definitely let me know what you think of them. And I definitely think 4K is worth it. I've heard a lot of people go back and forth on it. I've noticed some very awesome uh, upgrades, picture quality-wise, from Blu-ray. Uh, the clarity, the HDR is amazing. And uh, even if it's uh, like up-converted, too, from Blu-ray, I've noticed that as well. I think it still looks good. Um, so I, I'm very impressed. I'm loving it so far. I can't wait to see what titles they put out. And anything that's the best top of the line quality, I'm down to check out. And I think if you're, you know, a fan of cinema, you will appreciate that. But there you go. That's uh, my 4K Ultra HD mail day. Hope everybody's doing well. Take care.